And now let's welcome our very distinguished guest, Sri Ren, um, founder and CEO of Eigenlayer, and he's gonna present us Eigenlayer coordination layer of open innovation. Thank you. Thank you so much for the IOSG team for arranging this summit. Really excited to be here. Um, given that we had a great uh, introduction to Eigenlayer already, I'm gonna talk about EigenTA. And the theme that we explored when we built EigenTA is that how do we bring cloud to crypto? Okay, so you, you see the logo there with, uh, in the clouds, you know, some of you may recognize it. Um, how are we doing this? Uh, when you think about the era of rollups, you may think of two different objectives. One is, how do we outsource the Ethereum L1 traffic to uh, layer two? Um, whereas that's not our thesis. Our thesis is, how do we bring cloud scale compute to crypto? So firstly, why do cloud apps need crypto? So if you think about two, the, uh, the different kinds of apps, there are two fundamentally different access. So value per bit, which is how valuable the application is per bit of transaction, and throughput, which is what is the rate at which you are communicating. And crypto apps today are operating at the low value per bit, high value per bit, low throughput. But cloud applications really rely on exactly the other dynamic where there is a lot of throughput, but low value per bit each tweet that somebody writes, how much value can that have? But a lot of them together add to a lot of value for social networks, for example. So wh why do cloud apps need crypto? Crypto brings native incentives, user governance, and permissionless innovation. The last one, one of our favorite topics, permissionless innovation, how do we ensure that anybody who has great ideas can build on top of existing applications? If you are, you know, building on top of an API of Twitter or Facebook or something, then you're always worried, when is this API gonna shut off? When am I gonna be internalized into the core protocol? But in crypto, you have rigid, immutable, verified APIs that can be built on top of it. So, but cloud apps also need very high throughput. You know, we cannot make do with the amount of throughput we have today. We also need very low cost per bit. So these are the two dimensions that EigenDA really focuses on. Uh, before we go to that, like, let's first examine why uh, roll-ups. So when you think about cloud and consumer apps, there are several dimensions that don't fit the other deployment models that we have in crypto today. The first one is user experience. You want instant user experience. You want super fast confirmation. And what can do that better than a single central sequencer? This sequencer is kept in place by a variety of checks and balances where the state transition function's correctness is checked by a validity proof or an optimistic proof, as well as censorship resistance is brought in by ensuring the transactions in return to Ethereum L1 or directly to a data availability layer have to be included. But the instant confirmation changes the UX completely. The second one is when you want to bring cloud native applications, you, we cannot ask everybody to write their programs in the EVM. We need new virtual machines, new programming languages, game engines, AI inference engines, all of these natively into our blockchain infra. So that's something that rollups really help us do. And another thing that I think very few people have understood is that when you have a single central sequencer, you can do something which you cannot do with a decentralized blockchain, which is subjective admission control. What is subjective admission control? You know, we want to have no, no fee, free, usage for authenticated users. This is not something that you can do on a blockchain because you know, a blockchain has to uh, ensure that there is no spam. And the only way to ensure that there is no spam is to in impose a price. And a price is a very non-discriminative mechanism. It cannot distinguish between an MEV bot that's just spamming the chain and a real user who actually wants to use your application. So that's something that we could do with rollups. Uh, I, why can we do that with rollups? Because we have a single central sequencer. The sequencer can exert subjective admission control. For example, if you already have a Facebook or a Twitter ID, you should be able to log in and use the application without paying any fees, even without having a wallet. This is massively simplifying the user onboarding experience. So rollups have superpowers that people, few people have understood. And finally, we want to get all of that without losing the benefits that we are used to composability with other applications that are building on top of the blockchain space. We want to get existing liquidity. We also want to build on other developers' work. 
one of the things we are trying to do with Eigenlayer is to ensure that people specialize to build systems that are really resilient without having to do redundant work. You know, if you look at the large arc of civilization, it is it bends towards each of us doing more and more specialized things and uh, consuming more and more generic things. And that's really where we see rollups and Eigenlayer playing a role here. OK, but rollups are great, but they have a lot of problems. What are the problems that we see with rollups? The first problem is throughput. So, you know, if, if you go talk to any crypto dev, like you'd probably be worrying about block space. You know, how do I have access to block space? You know, is, is, is my demand for block space going to go up? Is somebody else going to come and like flood the block space? Like, you know, you go la does their next board ape drop and suddenly you're drowned in traffic and you can't get in. So this is, but this is not the case with cloud. The cloud space auto scales, you know. Cloud has more space if you have more demand. So that's how crypto should be, but it is not. Okay, the cost economics. If you're a cloud developer, you're used to very guaranteed performance and cost basis. Crypto devs faced high and erratic costs. You know, even if the cost is low, you don't know when the blockchain's block space is going to get full and you will face congestion costs. Um, we need security. You know, you, there are ways to solve the first two problems, get high throughput and low, low cost while giving up on security, but that's just no good. And finally, we need new features. We need to be able to build new VMs. We need many more integrations. How do you solve all of these problems with EigenDA? I'm going to very quickly run through these slides. The high-level idea is EigenDA is an order of magnitude scale over anything out there. Uh, Ethereum's 4844, which is coming up with the Denkun upgrade, is you know tens of kilobytes per second. EigenDA is going to launch at 10 megabytes per second. That's I think more throughput than what you know we know how to use today. But the next generation of developers will know how to use this scale of throughput. Um, while EigenDA has orders of magnitude improvement over crypto scale today, we don't think this is sufficient. Our goal is to convert cloud to crypto, which means we need much more scale. So we are working on it. And one of the things is in crypto, nominally, decentralization works against scaling. If you want more nodes to participate, you need to reduce the node requirements and so on. So decentralization works against scaling. EigenDA scales horizontally, which means in EigenDA, decentralization is scaling. The more nodes you have, the more throughput you can pump through the network. No single node ever needs to download all the data. That's the architecture of EigenDA. OK, so what, are, what about the economics, you know, the random price fluctuations and so on? So if you look at a rollup and compare it to something like a layer one today, you see that rollups are not really that competitive with layer ones in a few dimensions. The first one is the cost for DA, data availability, which is where you write your, uh, your data to a common uh, data repository is pretty high. The second one is data availability costs are uncertain. Even if it is low today, you know, 4844 launches, and you're like, yeah, you know, it's 10x lower, so let's just go you know, build all our applications there. And then somebody comes up with some new inscription thing that's going to drown your entire bandwidth out. And I, my, my gut feeling is that 4844, even though it's bringing more bandwidth, is not going to reduce gas costs that much. So data, because of this uncertainty, it's a big problem. Whereas if you're an L1, you don't have this problem. You know exactly how much the cost basis is, because you know nobody else is interfering with you. Finally, rollups take exchange rate risk, which means if rollups had a native token and they're paying fees, they don't know how much the fees is fluctuating because you know uh, the rollup token to ETH may fluctuate, and so there is a interchange risk. Okay, but for a layer one, that's not the case because you can just give a portion of your own inflation. How do we do? What do we do with EigenDA? Rollups can outrun layer ones. Why is it? The first one is the data availability cost is low. We have plentiful data availability built on a hyperscale system, so costs are low, and the second one is we have an ability in EigenDA to do long-term reservation. Just like you could, you'd go to AWS and reserve an instance that only you use and nobody else touches, you're reserving a lane of data availability just for yourself. That's possible with EigenDA. Next, even when you're doing this reservation, you would nominally pay an ETH, but you could also pay 
in your own native token, which means you fix a certain inflation of your native token that actually is being used to run data availability. And finally, roll-up tokens can be used in EigenDA for dual staking. So what it means is the data availability system is protected not only by each stakers, it's also protected by your own token committee. All of this work is outsourced to, the, to, to be managed by the EigenLayer and EigenDA systems. So that's what EigenDA does for um, rollups. EigenDA brings Ethereum-centric security. This is something that, you know, the architecture of EigenDA is the ETH stakers uh, participate in EigenLayer, and they can restake into EigenDA. Uh, we also bring the decentralization from uh, the Ethereum node operator set to EigenDA. And finally, we said we allowed the rollup tokens to be used natively for dual staking. So all of these things ensure that we have uh, high data availability security that you know when you're building on top of EigenDA. And finally, there is beyond the data bandwidth, there are other limitations that you see with Ethereum today. For example, finalization time is too slow. It takes 12 minutes to finalize a block. You know, there are new blockchains coming up and saying, like, I'm gonna give you confirmations in a second or lesser, not competitive. So what can we do? We can build new services on Eigen layer to actually solve these problems. You can have a super fast finalization layer, like the one near is building. Uh, you can also use, uh, for example, decentralized sequencing layers like um, Espresso to do this thing. Um, you, instead of relying on centralized sequencers, could use decentralized sequencers. Instead of bridging, which is rickety and low trust models, can we have bridges which are really rigid? When somebody wants to move data from one L2 to another L2, you have enough stake backing the bridge, and you go out and immediately accept the receipt on the other side and move uh, value around so you can have near instant confirmation using restake bridges. And finally, you have like much more powerful MEV management tools that you can build with uh, you know, Eigenlayer that you can hook into if you're a rollup on EigenDA. So Eigenlayer brings a lot of auxiliary services to EigenDA rollups. You know, I mentioned some of the limitations of Ethereum, but also there is additivity, which is there are new oracles, there are new keepers which do event-driven actions, two-factor authorization networks, fully homomorphic encryption, ZK proof verification, AI core processes, many, many new categories that will make it really easy for rollups that are working with the Eigenlayer ecosystem to integrate over time. So with that, I would like to conclude my talk. Thank you so much for IOSG for putting this together.